the EQ on a DJ mixer, how does it work, what is it for, and how do you use it to fine tune and balance the competing frequencies between two different tracks during a DJ set? I'll teach you that and everything else you need to know about the EQ on a DJ mixer in this video, so stick around. Yo, 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 what's going on guys? Bolo the DJ here from Pro DJ Academy and in this video, I'm gonna teach you absolutely everything that you need to know about the three band EQ found on just about every DJ mixer out there. We'll make sure that you know exactly what every single knob does, what frequencies it takes out and how you can use it to have super clean and crisp transitions during your DJ sets. Now there's tons of different DJ mixers and controllers and turntables out there. So all of them are gonna be a little bit different, but one thing that is gonna be consistent across most mixers out on the market right now is gonna be the three band EQ that is found on the mixer here in the middle. Traditionally, this is made up of three different knobs here that each adjust a different range of frequencies that are found in a song. Let's go ahead and start off with the top knob over here that controls all the high frequencies of a song. Now this could be anything between 2000 to 20,000 Hertz, meaning all of the hi-hats, all the percussions, the cymbals, the snares, all of the high end crispy stuff of a song is gonna be controlled with this knob here. Let me go ahead and show you exactly what this sounds like on a track. Now, as you just heard, as I twisted the top knob down, it took away all the hi-hats, the shakers, all of the percussion, and all of the high-end stuff that you hear in a song. Let's go ahead and jump over to the second knob on this three-band EQ mixer, which is all of the mid-range frequencies, which is anything from 300 hertz to 2000 hertz. As this is where you'll find most of the vocals, most of the backing instruments, and all of the main melodies that you hear of a song can usually be found in the mid-frequency range. Now, let me go ahead and show you exactly what this sounds like by adjusting the mid-frequency range of an actual song here. Now, as you just heard, as I adjusted the mid frequency knob down, it took away a lot of the main piano melodies that you hear in the background of the song. And it took away a lot of the meat and bones of the actual track. So the mid frequencies are a very, very vital part of the song. So you wanna make sure that they're finely balanced when you're transitioning between songs, but that covers the mid frequency range. Last but not least, we have the low frequency knob, which is found down here at the bottom of the three band EQ. Now this knob controls everything between zero to 300 Hertz which is arguably one of the most important frequency ranges of a song, as this is where you'll find the bass line and most of the weight of the kick of a song as well. These are the two parts of the songs that you really feel down deep and that carry most of the energy throughout a song. So you wanna make sure that you properly have your low frequencies balance whenever you're transitioning between songs. Let me go ahead and show you exactly what the low frequencies of a song sound like. Move, get out the way, my feet wanna go dancing. As you just heard, the low end is the part of the song that you really feel the bass line, which depending on what kind of sound system you're playing on, for example, if you were playing on a club sound system with a bunch of subwoofers, that's gonna be the part that's gonna get eliminated if you have this knob all the way down. Now, if you have two separate tracks playing at the exact same time, this is the frequency range that you're gonna to wanna to monitor the closest because if you have two bass lines going at the same time and you have two low ends that are competing for the same frequency range, it starts to sound really muddy, it sounds kind of distorted, and if there's someone out on the dance floor and they're moving to the rhythm of one bass line, if there's another one that comes in and tries to overpower the original bass line, it can really confuse the crowd. And so, so I always recommend to beginner DJs, when you first start bringing in a new song, make sure that you start it off with the low frequencies cut almost as low as they go. And as you slowly start to introduce them more, you can slowly start to swap out the bass lines to make sure that there's no competing frequencies and your mix sounds super crisp and super clean. Let me show you exactly what that would look like with an actual mix here on Rekordbox. Move, get out the way, my feet wanna go dancing. Uh. 
Now, as you just heard, using only the low frequency knob on the three band EQ mixer, I was able to switch back and forth between the two different bass lines here without them ever sounding muddy or distorted at all, which made it for a super crisp and clean mix. Now on the contrary, if you had two songs playing at the same time and you hear the hi-hats or the percussion starts to sound too harsh, almost ear piercing like, then I'd recommend you cut out some of the high frequencies, preferably on the song that you're gonna be mixing out of. This makes it so when you do introduce the new song that you're mixing in fully, it's not gonna sound any different and the only thing that you were taking away was the song that's gonna be getting removed. Now one of the biggest mistakes that I see beginner DJs make is actually cranking up the knobs of all the different frequencies all the way up as high as they go. Although these knobs do allow for you to take away frequencies or add on frequencies if you need, I would always advise that if you have two frequency ranges that are competing for each other, take away any frequencies of a song that you're mixing out of before you try to boost any other frequencies. Boosting the frequencies by cranking it to the right can make it so the song sounds really distorted or almost very ear piercing, very harsh to the ears and super unpleasant for people who are listening to your mix. So again, if you're mixing two songs and you hear that it starts to sound harsh or that it sounds too quiet, try taking out frequencies of the song that you're gonna be mixing out of before you try boosting any of these other frequencies. Be very careful with this because you don't wanna be playing in a club sound system and you're cranking all these different frequencies and you end up blowing the sound system because that is the quickest way to not get called back to a venue. Make sure you take some time to practice mixing with the three band EQ and try to get your mixes sounding as clean as you can. My advice to you would be if you can't focus on all these different frequencies at once, try starting off with just the low end frequencies, which again is gonna control that bass line and most of the kick as these are the frequency ranges that tend to compete with each other the most. And if you're able to get those two balanced out well enough, then you should be on your way to a very solid and clean mix. Now, if you want a step-by-step -step guide on how to become fluent on any DJ mixer, then make sure you check out our brand new intro to DJing course where we teach you all the fundamentals of DJing all the way up until getting your first paid gig. If this sounds like you, then make sure you check out the link in the description for more information on our intro to DJing course. I hope you were able to learn a thing or two from this video here. If you were, please make sure you leave us a like, leave us a comment, and feel free to check out our channel for other weekly tips and tools just like this one here. We'll catch you in the next one.